How's it going guys? In today's video we're going to be looking at how we can create a URL shortener in SwiftUI. And I have a sample project here, so this is exactly what we'll be making. You can see we have a link section where we can freely edit a link, and we also have a place to get the result. If we go ahead and submit the link, it's going to process it and it's going to return to us a shortened link provided by tiny URL. So we can also go ahead and reset that. And as you can see, now we have an empty box. And if we submit nothing, we're going to get an error message that says, please add a URL, or we can type in something random. And it's still not going to be happy with that. So it's going to say, please enter a valid URL. So of course we need to go ahead and find something that the program actually likes. So go somewhere in your app, find a link to HTTPS double dot, double slash, let's say www.google.com slash cats or a cactus actually and submit and you'll get a new tiny URL. So it's a very simple project, but we're also going to cover API requests in a bit more depth so that you can get a better understanding on how to make them and how to use them. But with that being said, let's go ahead and create a new empty project in Xcode and I'm using an iPhone 13 for this. And the very first thing we're going to do is click on our project folder and hold down command plus N so we can create a new Swift file. And this is going to be for the data model. And we're just going to call this URL short manager. So everything that has to do with the API request and the data model will be placed inside here. And we can place that right above the content view. Up next, it's really important I introduce to you the API that we'll be using. We're going to be using this one provided by tiny URL, and it does require you to sign up so you can get a free API token. Of course, you can copy mine from the video, but chances are it might not work if so many of you use it because there is a limit of 600 per day. So I definitely recommend you go ahead and create your own account and go to the API section and create a new token. Inside the documentation, we're going to go ahead and click on this slash create. And down here, we want to look for the data model. So as you can see, every time we have a successful operation, we're going to have this object return to us. And that's what we really care about. So go ahead and copy this. And then we're going to go to a website called app.quicktype.io because this will just create the data class for us. And it's a lot easier than writing it out manually. So here we delete this and insert the data class we want. Now we're just going to click on plain types only. So we get this very simple data structure. We will copy that and we're going to drag it into our URL short manager. Now for the errors, we're going to change this to of type string and we want to conform both of these to codable. And we're going to change the main struct to URL short and the data class is going to be called URL data. Then we can remove the comment because it's not necessary. And that requires that we also change the data class to URL data. Now we're not going to be using the tags for this so we can remove the tags and the tiny URL is going to be optional because sometimes it returns nil and I haven't figured out why this bug happens inside the API. The request goes good, but the tiny URL sometimes returns nothing at all, even if it is a successful request. But once we have all of this, we can go ahead and get started with creating the API request. So we're going to create a manager that acts on the main thread. So we have to give it the annotation of main actor followed by class and URL short manager, which conforms to the observable object protocol. Then inside here, we have to go ahead and type in private let API underscore key equal. And you just insert your API key here, or you can copy this, that's up to you. And then we have to go ahead and create two published variables, published var result URL, which will be set to an empty string initially. And this is where we're going to store the shortened link value. Otherwise, I recommend you go ahead and type in add published var input URL. And this is the URL we'll use to input into the API so it can give us a shortened version. And I'm just going to insert a link from one of my favorite music groups, Caravan Palace. And that's just going to be the placeholder when the app starts up, but you can replace that with any link you desire. Now we have to go ahead and create a function 
that will get the data or retrieve the JSON data. And the first thing we really have to do is type in guard let, and I'm going to minimize the side window, URL equal URL from the string. And inside here, we have to go ahead and type in HTTPS double dot double slash API dot tiny URL dot com. And we have to use the endpoint of create. And then we need to provide a URL, which is going to be equal to the input URL. So backslash and insert the input URL. And it requires an API token, which is going to equal the backslash API token, which is just called API key. And if for whatever reason this doesn't want to work, we're going to go ahead and return. The program will not crash and it will just prematurely end this function. And actually, if you want to make it easier to debug, you can go ahead and type in invalid URL. But if this did work, we can go ahead and type in URL session dot shared dot data task with URL. And then we just insert the URL. And what we want to get back from this is the data, the response, and the error message so that we can use all of that inside this closure. In, then inside here, we need to make sure that we can retrieve the data from the URL. So we have to go ahead and type in guard let data equal data, else we're going to print could not retrieve data. And this usually happens if there's no internet or something just blocks the API from reaching the mobile device. And we're going to go ahead and create a dispatch queue dot main dot async. So we can update the code self dot result URL is going to be equal to could not retrieve data. So the user knows exactly what went wrong. And then we need to go ahead and return. And finally, if these two work correctly, we can go ahead and try to decode the JSON response that we've received. So let the shortened URL equal try JSON decoder dot decode URL short dot self from data. And then we have to create another dispatch queue dot main dot async. And this is required if you want to make changes to the UI because it puts it on the main thread and it makes sure it's on the main thread. So here we can go ahead and print the shortened URL object. So we understand what we're getting back. This is always good for debugging. Of course, you don't have to include this in the final version of your application, but I like to include it because it always shows me what the object returned contains. Now we can go ahead and call self.resultURL and we're going to type in HTTPS double dot double slash tinyurl.com slash plus shortened URL dot data dot alias. And this is actually a workaround because originally, according to the documentation, we're supposed to be able to go ahead and call tiny URL directly, which just concatenates this plus the alias. But since that never worked out for me and I still don't understand why it didn't work, we're just going to use the alias, which is always returned in the JSON and we can always rely on. So we're just doing this manually instead of using the pre-made version in the tiny URL API. So we're gonna try to do this madness and if it doesn't work we're going to go ahead and catch and we're going to take a dispatch queue once again and inside here we'll type in please enter a valid url and we'll also go ahead and print the error so quotation marks backslash and inside here we insert the error and since the url session is async we need to go ahead and resume it so the function gets called immediately and that's going to take care of the data class. So just to go over what we just did here, we created a model that captures the data from the JSON. Then we went ahead and created a URL short manager, which provides the API key and some places to store the variables that we want to retrieve. And then we went ahead and created a function that will update the data. And first it checks if we have a valid URL, then it goes ahead and creates a URL session, which tries to get the data, the response and the error with the URL that we provide. And if there is data, we can move on to actually decoding the data. Otherwise, we need to provide a valid URL or we need to make sure that we have a valid connection. But with that being done, we can actually go to the content view and start using this data in our app. 
So we're going to be using environment object to make this work. So we have to go ahead and type in at state object var short URL is going to equal our URL short manager object. And we also should inject that into the environment in case we want to use it later. But first we need to create a form. So here we can go ahead and type in environment object and inject the short URL. Now the very first thing in here we have to do is create a section and it's going to have a title of link. Then we can go ahead and provide a text editor and we're just going to refer to the text with a binding variable, which is bound to our short URL dot input URL. Then we'll go ahead and type in frame and only provide the height, which will be set to 200 or actually 100 is fine. Next we'll have an H stack and inside here we need two spaces like that and a button in the center. And the button is just going to say submit and of course the functionality is going to submit the URL to be converted into a tiny URL. So first we want to check if short URL dot input URL is empty. That means that the user should type in a URL before even attempting to make the request. So we'll just type in short URL dot result URL is going to equal please add a URL first. Else that means there's something in there and we don't know what it is yet. We're just going to go ahead and type in short URL dot result URL is going to equal loading. And this is going to happen while we're making the API request or attempting to make it. And we'll just call get data inside here. Now we're very close to finishing. All we have to do is create the second section, which will display the data. So inside here, we go ahead and type in results and we'll use the text field followed by a description such as your shortend link will appear here. And the text will be bound to short URL dot input URL. And it's getting really hard to say URL. I'm actually learning a lot here. Next, we have to go ahead and add a text selection, which will be set to enabled. And we're going to change the foreground color to green because green has a really positive connotation with that color. And we'll go ahead and add an H stack. And inside here, we need to add another button that's very similar to the first button. So just go ahead and copy that, paste it inside. But of course, we want to add a few changes to it. So remove everything inside the button, add a tint color of dot red, and type in reset. And inside here, we will just make everything reset to its initial state. So input URL will equal an empty string. And short URL dot result URL will also equal an empty string. And I noticed I messed up. This is supposed to be result URL. So you shouldn't see anything here besides your shortened link will appear here. But now we can go ahead and run this app. And as soon as it runs, you'll notice that you'll have a link inside here ready to be submitted so that we can test our application. Go ahead and tap on submit. And you'll notice we'll get a tiny URL down here. If we go ahead and click on reset, it's going to empty everything. If we try to submit it again, it's going to say, please add a URL first. And then we can go ahead and type in something sloppy such as as does does and submit it. And it's going to say, please enter a valid URL. Otherwise, we can try to add something such as https double dot double slash www.google.com slash epic cats and we can submit it. And it's going to provide a tiny URL for that link over there. And that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's lesson. So with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.